Hey everyone, welcome to the second part in my Bullet Hell Godot engine game tutorial. Uh, the first part we created an enemy, a player, the enemy shoots out a bunch of bullets, and we started getting collision working. Uh, if you missed that part, make sure you go check that out. This one's going to be pretty simple, pretty short. I'm going to try to add a little bit of uh, some, not well, not really intelligence to the enemy yet, but uh, just a little bit more control over how the bullets are firing. And it'll be our first kind of actual resembled enemy. So, well, first enemy resembling actual functionality. So if I run the program as it is now, we have the player, we have the bullets, but this doesn't look like a very good enemy because it's, it's obviously just spinning and it's just kind of shooting them out. If I show you what happens, so if we go into the enemy script, it's just rotating right now at this speed. And I say speed because uh, we're rotating at that. We're rotating that amount every frame. So if we make this amount less, then it will rotate slower, and the bullets are going to be much closer together, and it's going to be much harder to dodge, uh, just because it's constantly spitting them out at the same frequency. So if I put this up to 0.5, now it's rotating much faster, and the spread of the bullets is much more consistent. That looks pretty cool. I, I think that could be a legitimate enemy, but it can't just spawn them out uh, without any regard for you know how often it would have to come in waves or, or something like that. Uh, you know, it couldn't just constantly keep happening. Um, so what what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking about doing is I want to create an enemy that shoots maybe four bullets at a time. And it's very simple. You know, this could be maybe level one or, or at the very beginning of an endless run. Here's the enemy that starts coming at the player. Uh, it shoots a bullet in all four directions, and then it's slowly rotating. And there's a, a timer uh, that will time out between the shots so that the shots are spread out a little bit more. So the idea is that it's not an extremely difficult enemy to deal with on its own. And the complexity comes from maybe having multiple of those enemies all over the board or maybe coming towards a player. So so that's the idea. So I'm going to try to, I actually haven't done it. Um, usually I would do it and then, you know, practice, make sure it works and then do it during the video. But I kind of want to just attack this and just see what happens. Um, so I think the place to start is to change. Uh, really, we just need to maybe create a function for spawning these bullets. So I think we can start there. And again, there could be some trial and error here because I, I haven't tested this. So we'll say spawn bullets, and that'll be our function. And we're gonna need more than just one. So uh, we'll say var b1, or b1 for all these. Let's just do it for two for now, just to make sure that this works. Bullet scene, oh, bullet scene dot instance. I guess I should have just copied it. And we're going to set it to the same position and rotation, just like we did. Except now, get parent add child. Oh, B1, and then get parent add child B2. So we're just adding the bullets to the, the parent of this. So if I rotate and then I call spawn bullets, Theoretically, everything should remain the same. We should still get our bullets. Those at the top, there's some coming across the top, and that must be B2. Did I say... Oh, I didn't set B2's position rotation to this. So right now, it should be spawning two bullets at a time. They're just overlapping because we haven't changed the direction. So I think that's the next thing, is to take each bullet so we, we're passing in like position and rotation within the bullet script we just have this arbitrary vector and we're just going in that distance so what we need to be able to do from the enemy is kind of tell it what direction it's supposed to be going in so what we could do is set up var direction var i think we can do this vector to and we'll say, let's start it at zero, zero, just to try it, I don't know. And then we'll take this and we'll say direction instead. Well, we'll do one zero like it was, just to run it and make sure that this still works, which it does. We've got that vector saved as a variable. Now we just want to change the vector uh, whenever we create the bullet. 
So I'm going to go back into the enemy script. And whenever we create the bullet, so for B1, we'll say B1 dot dir direction equals vector 2. Again, this is kind of arbitrary because we're going to go through all the different combinations. We'll have 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1 for the four different directions. And I think that this is going to work pretty well. Vector 2, 0, 1. Okay, we'll run it. I think it's just going to look kind of globbled up and we're not going to be able to tell much. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty encouraging that something has changed, uh, but still, uh, we're just getting closer. So let's leave the two for now. And the other thing that we need to do is obviously it can't just spam these bullets if we want there to be kind of an actual kind of recognizable structure to it. So we need a timer. We can add that to the enemy scene. So we're in the enemy scene. All it has right now is a sprite and this script where it's spawning the bullets. But I'm going to right click on it, hit add, add child node, and then we're going to add a timer. And I think it's been a while since I worked with the timers. So timer, I'm on the timer, and then I click on node, and then we're going to set a signal, timeout signal, in this enemy script. So I connect it, connect to the enemy. I want to change this and just call it timeout. And I think that's good. So now we have this timeout function. We still need to make sure that we're setting the timer whenever the enemy appears. I can delete this too. I don't know why I still have this kind of in here. So in the ready function, actually before the ready function, we need to, let's grab the timer. So we'll say var timer equals get node timer. I'm actually not sure if we have to do that. Maybe we can just call it. It doesn't matter. We'll just do it from the ready function. So we'll say timer dot, I think it's set, it set something, set time or set, set time, set wait time. I thought it was set wait time. Is that real? And then timer dot start. It should be like that. And then we just tell it the wait time. So let's say, let, let's just try this and see if it works. And if it doesn't, then I'll, I'll try to find out if that's right. Theoretically, we've set the wait time at two seconds and it's gonna loop every two seconds. It's gonna time out and call this function. And then we can do whatever we want here. So let's, let's start by saying print uh, timer, timer timeout. And then we will run this. And hopefully every two seconds, we will see timer timeout come across, which we do. So it's coming, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but it's at the bottom left in the output, uh, kind of the terminal window. So every two seconds, it's saying timer timeout. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now that we have that timer, we can take spawn bullets out of our process function that's calling every frame, and we can just plug that into our timeout function. We'll take away the print statement, and now when I run this, the enemy should send out some bullets. I don't know if my screen froze uh, a second ago. Yeah, so the enemy sends out some bullets every two seconds. It's pretty close. We've got the two bullets, and they're doing exactly what I want. Uh, they come out at a, at a regular interval. We want to decrease the rotation speed. Let's do like 0 0.03, and we also need to add, uh, we basically need to do all of this two more times. So bullet three, bullet four, bullet three, bullet three, bullet three, and then bullet three, bullet three. And then these are just going to be negatives here we're doing all four directions and then we have to add both of these bullets as children as well bullet three and bullet four uh, we changed the rotation speed so it should be rotating a lot slower now and oh i also want to decrease this so let's say like 0.2 maybe 0.2 seconds and we'll run it that is not quite right. Something something happened with one of the bullets. I must have just not... Oh, yeah. Bullet three. 
So this is supposed to be bullet four, and now it should be working. Pretty cool. I mean, it's it's essentially working, but it's still they're still maybe coming out a little bit too fast because my idea is that there'll be a lot of these enemies. There'll be a lot of these. They'll kind of be moving towards the, play, the, towards the player from the top, and uh, who knows, maybe they don't even follow a straight path, uh, but I, I really want them to kind of spit them out intermittently. So let's, let's turn, what do I want to do? I want to turn down time a little bit. Let's say 0. 0.6. That's not bad. That's not terrible but maybe up the rotation speed just a little bit. I think that looks a lot better. It's still not exactly what I had in mind, but it's pretty cool. So the last thing I'll do, just to try, just to kind of see what it looks like. I do eventually want the enemies to come from the top of the screen. You know, I want this to be kind of a traditional, you know, we've got the player at the bottom and they're just kind of moving left and right to try to dodge. It could go either way. And maybe it would be cool to kind of randomly change direction. Uh, so you're, you know, sometimes you're you're dodging things from the top. Sometimes you're dodging things from the right or left. Something like that. But let's take the enemy and every frame will move it towards uh, the right for right now. So we'll say position dot x plus equal to 1. So we'll just pretend for a second that the enemy is coming towards a player. Yeah, that's not gonna. That's actually not gonna fly very well. That looks really strange, actually. I mean, it looks pretty good when the enemy's pretty stationary. What if it's a lot slower? So what if we say point zero four? What did I what did I even change? And did I change what I thought I did? Oh, 0.04 is way too low. 0.3. Okay, so now it's kind of moving. Yeah. It's still not exactly what I envisioned. Um I probably need to maybe spawn them ahead of it. That way it doesn't look like they're coming. You know, it seems like the bullets are kind of spawning from behind. I mean, it's not a terrible enemy if there were a couple of them, which we can do. We could we could spawn a couple more, but uh, but I mean that's pretty satisfying so far. I think I'm gonna mess with that on my own a little bit, but hopefully this has been helpful. We've got a little bit of a, a little bit more control over our enemy with changing the rotation speed. We're changing the bullet spawn time. We're not just spawning them in the the process function. We've added some more bullets, and we've started to kind of alter the bullet behavior from the enemy. Uh, the idea for the future is that we'll have different enemies with different behaviors, obviously. Uh, so we'll we'll branch out a lot with with different uh, different strategies on the the enemies. But uh, but I think that's pretty good for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you learned something new, or you're just enjoying the videos in the past, or this one, maybe hit the subscribe button, leave a like on the video, leave me a comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. Thank you very much for watching. The videos are always really fun to make, and uh, I hope you enjoy them just like I do. So hopefully I'll see you in the next one.